Hey YouTube, welcome back to my object-oriented TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to continue where we left off previously and talk about polymorphism and talk about a concept called abstract classes and methods. So this is the previous example. I'm going to simplify this up a bit and delete this code right here. And we're just going to have a hero and we're going to have two classes. Let's have the archer and knight. And I'm just going to expand this, this code right here. Okay, cool. So we know that we can create archers, right? Let's just for the sake of clarity, explicitly annotate the archer variable to be type archer. And this is going to be an archer object. We know we can do this. That's plain old objects. And we know we can make a knight as well. It's going to be the knight type and we're going to create a new knight. And now from the previous video, we know we can do something like this as well, where we can have, let's say a knight two, and this can be a hero, right? This is polymorphism because a knight is a hero. But what happens if I'm just gonna do this? What happens? What does this mean? If we, let's create something, someone called Bob and he's a hero and he's a new hero. What does this really mean in our code? And right now, it doesn't make the most sense for our specific use case to create an actual hero object, right? In a lot of cases and scenarios, there will be certain classes, and in, in this case, it's our hero class, that it doesn't really make sense to instantiate because we are creating specific subclasses of the hero class. We have the archer class subclass, we have the knight subclass, and then now we're just creating a new hero. Like, it's very confusing and doesn't make sense. So as a programmer, I don't want to instantiate the hero class. So the way we prevent any class from ever being instantiated is by using the abstract keyword. If we prepend abstract before a class, then we already get the type error here saying we cannot create an instance of an abstract class. So in other words, the keyword abstract prevents anyone from using the new, the new function on the class. We can't create instances of the class. But the reason why we still want to keep it as a class is because we want to use it for an inheritance. So we want to use it for code reuse, right? And then that way Archer and Knight inherit these three methods. So we don't have code duplication. And we also want to use it for polymorphism. So we still have that these two can be heroes. And even though we can't instantiate hero objects on the right hand side of the equal sign, we can still have variables as hero types because then we can take advantage of polymorphism right here. Right, Because we can instantiate the archer and knight classes, but not the hero class, we call the archer, the archer class and the knight class concrete classes, and we call the hero class an abstract classes. So abstract classes are pretty clear. You can see the keyword. And then any class that you can actually instantiate, we're going to call that a concrete class, right? Because it's concrete. It's a concrete object that is able to be instantiated. Besides declaring classes as, as abstract, we can also declare methods as abstract. So an abstract class needs to be extended. And similarly, an abstract method needs to be over overrided. Let's say we don't want to include this, this message in all of the subclasses attack method. We don't want to include I'm attacking. So we're going to remove super from both of the subclasses methods. And this is just going to override custom behavior, right? So as an abstract class, we want to, we don't want to provide any, any implementation. We just want to say, Hey, if you're going to extend me as a subclass, you're going to need to implement the void attack. And I'm just going to explicitly type in void for all of these methods right here. Cause we're just printing to the console. So back to the attack method. So like the class, we can declare this method as an abstract method. And here we get a nice helpful type error saying the method attack cannot have an implementation because it is marked as abstract. So we have to remove the curly braces. And with this, we just declare, and like I said before, that any subclass that inherits from hero must implement the abstract method. So here in the archer and knight method, we're overriding the attack method. And because of that, these are concrete classes. We are able to instantiate them. So you might be asking, what's the whole purpose of having this abstract method, right? The whole purpose of extracting shared 
behavior and state into a super type was for code reuse, right? So we're not really reusing any behavior. We have the attack method here on the archer and the attack method here on the knight. So we're overriding the attack method on each subclass of the hero. Well, it makes sense to include shared behavior in the super type when it makes sense, right? Move and E are generic, but attack needs to, we don't want to include any sort of implementation on the on the abstract level. We just want to say, we just want to declare this because this takes advantage of polymorphism, right? So here, when we have our, let's say, we create an array of heroes, and this is an archer, and this is a knight, we know that when we loop through, whoops, this is a typo right here, we know that when we loop through every knight of heroes, or not every knight, hero of heroes, we know we can call attack. And the only reason why we can call attack on this is because this is these this array is an array of heroes, and we know the hero type has this attack method, right? So we know that this array must include, must be made up of concrete classes, and these concrete classes will have implemented this abstract method. So that's the reason why. Of course, we're not getting any code reuse, but there's no point of code reuse because we don't want to reuse any of this behavior amongst the subclasses because it's specific to each and every subclass. Knight has its own specific attack behavior, and Archer has its own specific attack behavior. And we declare this abstract method to take advantage of polymorphism. Yeah, so I'm just going to finish hero.attack here. And we get a type error here, right? And the type error says, abstract methods can only appear within an abstract class. Because if this method is abstract, then how can we create, let's say we have our Bob guy again, hero. How can we create our hero when the abstract, when the attack method doesn't even have a implementation, right? So if you're declaring a method on a class, then that class must be abstract as well. So before I said that every subclass of an abstract class must override its abstract methods, and that wasn't the total truth. Every concrete class that you, every class that you want to make concrete must override it. So you can actually have classes that extend from hero, but are still abstract. So I'm going to delete all this code. And let's say we have mages. We have a class called mage. And then we have a class called wizard, which extends from mage. And a class called witch, which extends from mage as well. Right? And the mage has some, some mana. And we have number. And then it's going to extend from hero as well, right? And we get a type error here. Right, so non-abstract class mage does not implement inherited abstract member attack. So this is a problem here because we're saying that this class is concrete, but TypeScript is saying it can't be concrete because you're not actually providing an implementation of attack. So here, we're gonna declare the mage method, as, mage class as abstract, and then that works as, as well. So then in class wizard, we get these type errors, and this is the type error that we want because we're trying to tell our code that these are concrete classes, but we don't have concrete implementations for the attack method. So then in here, we'll call this dot mana minus equals one, and then we'll log out wizard attacks, right? And then in the witch, we'll do the same thing with a custom different message, the witch attacks. So you can see the levels right here. Hero is our first abstract class. And then there's a intermediary abstract class called mage. And we don't want to instantiate mage objects, but we still want to create an abstract mage class because we want each and every mage, like a wizard and a witch, to inherit this mana instance variable. So then in the specific concrete classes, we have access to this dot mana because it inherits it from mage. And then in fact, these wizard and witch classes, because there's no abstract keyword, are in fact concrete classes. So we can call wizard equals a new wizard. And we can do the same thing with a witch. And then let us call attack on both of these objects. And we get our desired behavior. Cool. And there you have it. That was a video of abstract classes. Just to summarize, we have abstract classes. We, we, we create abstract classes when it doesn't make sense to instantiate the abstract class. And the purpose of abstract classes is to still provide 
some code reuse through inheritance with shared behavior and state. But besides inheritance, we also use it for polymorphism because when we have a shared protocol, we know that all hero classes will conform to this contract, right? We know all hero classes will have an attack method. So we can call attack safely on heroes. Same thing with move and same thing with eat. And then we can also declare methods as abstract. These methods, it, it doesn't make sense to implement these methods on the abstract level. So we're going to declare these methods as abstract because we still, we still want these methods to live on this level because we need the guarantee that all heroes will have the attack for polymorphism reasons. But here is where we implement the attack methods. And yeah, so that's it. And I'll see you in the next video.